All right. So essentially what I'm going to be talking about today is AWS CloudWatch Insights, uh, CloudWatch Log Insights to be specific, uh, and, and how it can really empower your teams and help your teams. Um, so let's look at how we can we can do that. And let's first take a look at our agenda. So basically, I'm going to be doing an introduction uh, to begin with. I'm going to explain who I am and, and how I use uh, this technology so that you know that, you know, I have the credentials behind it and I'm not just standing up here talking to you. Uh, then we're going to do like a monitoring and logging overview and look at uh, how, you know, your your monitoring and logging needs need to be met in order to be able to do, you know, this type of log analysis and, and those sorts of things. Uh, and then we're going to take a, a detour and we're going to go and do a CloudWatch log uh, uh, log insights demo where basically I'm going to dive into the console. We're going to generate some um, sample data sets uh, using you know various tools and then from there we're going to go and we're going to actually analyze some of that data and I will show you some example queries and things like that and then at the end we'll finish up with about 10 minutes of uh, question and answer. Uh, I will try to go a little bit faster because we're starting a little bit behind, but I added, you know, some wiggle room in here as needed. So, all right. So, yeah. So who am I? Uh, my name is Tyler Martin. Uh, I'm a cloud infrastructure lead uh, here at Stratusgrid. Uh, Stratusgrid is an AWS advanced par uh, partner based out of Chattanooga. We have basically managed, build, and deploy uh, mission critical systems in the cloud. Um, so some additional information about me, I'm 100% cloud native. Uh, my entire career has been spent primarily inside of AWS. Uh, and my area of focus uh, primarily is DevOps and uh, basically centralized around microservices um, and the deployment and managing of microservices at this point. So which leads me to my next point. And what I wanna talk about is logging. So essentially monitoring and logging, uh, whether it's part of the engagement or not, uh, almost entirely always comes up in, in some degree. Uh, as you can imagine, people, they, they don't have the proper monitoring in place. They don't have the proper logging in place. So what we see quite oftentimes is that we have to come in there and we have to lay this foundation for people. Uh, and, and what that actually means is uh, I like to give prescriptive guidance. And, and when it comes to monitoring and logging, uh, you're, you're basically looking for a solution that can cover these six areas. You know, these six areas are the, the capturing and the ingestion of the logs uh, and the metrics. So we want to get those into CloudWatch. We want to get those out of your on-premise systems. We want to get those out of your, you know, data centers or, or whatever you have them currently in. And we want to get them somewhere where you can actually view them, analyze them, and get some meaningful uh, results from there. So in order to do that, we have to have some form of process to be able to search and analyze these. Uh, and that's kind of where we're going to touch on uh, here in a bit. But basically, we want to be able to, to perform troubleshooting. We want to problem identification and application analysis to dive deep into, OK, what's what's the root cause? What's potential trends? How does this stuff look and those things inside of our workloads? Um, as for monitoring and alerts, uh, we, we want to make sure that we have proper, you know, fine tuned monitoring and alerts and those sorts of things on our workloads, uh, you know, monitoring and application service availability. Uh, we're basically going to be doing such things as synthetic tests and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, that's basically what this all boils down to is just making sure that, you know, the service is continuously monitored. And we're also checking and, and using all different possible uh, monitoring methods in order to ensure that it's it's up and running properly. Uh, tracing is to, to basically allow us to take a request from the very beginning and, and go all the way through its entire life cycle through the stack uh, so that we can see exactly how each uh, piece of the stack interacts with that request uh, so that we're able to easy identify, you know, and perform root calls at, at that level. And then, you know, your dashboards and your visualizations are basically your bells and whistles that, you know, it really, really helps and it empowers the team to succeed. So what we're going to be looking at today is we're going to look at how CloudWatch uh, captures the logs and, and ingests them. Uh, well, I'm going to do that very simply uh, with a demonstration uh, here in a moment around uh, actually using a Lambda function. We're going to talk a little bit about what that actually looks like and, and how you should structure your logs in order to get the most out of the logs going into CloudWatch. And then we're going to proceed and we're going to start doing the searching and analyzing portion of this, of this demo where we'll look at uh, CloudWatch log insights and perform a couple of queries in there uh, inside of log insights so that we can, you know, start looking in and trying to, to dial in on the issues and identify trends and stuff inside our data. So, yeah. 
So without further ado, uh, I will go ahead and proceed to the live demo. Uh, if you have any sac sacrifices to the live demo gods, uh, make them at this moment uh, and bear with me for one second and I will prepare to share my other screen. Awesome. Can you see the AWS Lambda console right now? Yes. Awesome. So yeah. So essentially what we're going to do in, in this particular situation, uh, in order to facilitate and generate our own data set, as you can see here, I don't have any Lambdas. But what I'm going to do in this case, just a quick and easy and, and, and kind of dirty way to, to generate some logs and, and put it inside of uh, CloudWatch uh, logs for me to be able to analyze, is I'm going to create a Lambda function that will actually write the event that it receives straight to CloudWatch so that I can keep the logs. Uh, I can just basically take this structure JSON that I have and I'll send that structure JSON as a log event to CloudWatch just so I have some data in there that we can start begin parsing and those sorts of things. So yeah, let's go ahead and look at what that looks like. So I'm just going to do it manually inside the console. Uh, normally, I uh, do not recommend this. I recommend using a, a tool such as Terraform or Infrastructure as Code. But for some of you that are not entirely familiar with those sorts of uh, tools yet, I will go ahead and show you how we can do it from scratch and just kind of make it simple for you. So I'm going to go inside of here, um, inside of create function. I'm basically going to create from scratch. I'm going to type in right here. I'm going to type, uh, let's type it in as log dash insights dash example uh, is what I'll name it. Uh, everything else looks fine. I'm going to make sure that I select uh, Node.js because I'm going to use the Node.js runtime. Uh, advanced settings, everything looks fine. Change default execution rule. Nope, I'll just keep the default execution rule for this. Okay, and I will go ahead and click create function. All right. And it'll take a couple of minutes. Uh, for that to create. Uh, but what I'm going to do is it's basically going to create a, ge a generic uh, Lambda function. And this Lambda function, I'll then go in and modify the source code for uh, here in just a moment in order to basically uh, pass my event as uh, pass my event to logs. So what I'll do here in this case is I'll basically go over here and I'll take my async function and I'll take my event, comma, my context. And then from there, I will go ahead and let me remove all of this. Let me make sure that I get in my bracket and let me go console. Dot info. And then I'm going to type in an event so that we basically pass out the event. String, and then we're going to JSON dot stringify this so that we get it into the JSON format that we want. And I'm going to pass in event, comma, oh, comma, two, and then enter, and I'm going to return context dot log stream name. Okay. And let me make sure I got everything I need. And I misspelled that. I spelled contest instead of context. Apologies. There we go. All right. So basically at this point, uh, I can go ahead and I can click test. Uh, but first, let's deploy. So this right here will update the, the code that I've just added in there. Uh, you can do it directly in the console like this. I don't recommend this. Normally, uh, what I do is I have a CI CD pipeline. Uh, you'll basically upload a file to go through the process of grabbing that file and pushing it out. But for the sake of this demo, I'm just showing you right here. So, you know, 
beginner friendly type stuff. Um, and then from, from this perspective, what I want to do is, is inside of the Lambda console, we have this test function. Uh, I'm going to click create, uh, click test here, which will basically ask me to create a new event. Uh, we're going to call this event test event. Uh, and this test event, this test event will be used for us to generate our data. So I will then go down here and I think I'm going to use the API gateway AWS proxy because that has a lot of good fields in it, a lot of good data that we may want to look at and, um, you know, perform some operations against. So yeah, let me go ahead and click save here. Awesome. So now essentially what I've done is I've created a test event that I can send to this Lambda. This Lambda will then take and it will write this event via console.info. It will write it to CloudWatch um, in theory. Let's test and make sure that it actually works, right? So click test and voila, there we go. So we have function logs and it logs the entire test event. Uh, straight to CloudWatch. So I'll click it a couple more times. We'll go in here and we'll modify and change some data real quick. Let's change, uh, let's change the country. Let's change this to old Canada or CA. There we go. And we'll save. Test it a few more times. So now we're generating. Now we're generating it with different data, or we should be. Yep, there we go. We're generating with different data. So we'll have slightly different data. Um, and now if we go to monitoring over here, and we can just simply click view and log insights, that'll take us directly to our log group. Um, so for those of y'all who are unaware how things are broken down in uh, AWS CloudWatch, you basically have these things called log groups. Uh, log groups are the kind of the, the parent folder for what we have and what we call log streams. Log streams are the incoming data streams of logs coming from some source inside of AWS. Uh, most AWS services easily integrate with CloudWatch uh, and you don't have to go through too much trouble uh, to basically get them publishing logs to log groups, uh, which is, is highly recommended get logs off of servers. Uh, I don't want to be going into servers and performing finds and grabs and aux and all those things uh, while it's 2 a.m. and I'm troubleshooting an incident. Uh, that's it just makes it more difficult because now we're juggling SSH keys and everything else to get on the servers or or all those sorts of things. So this this just makes it easy where it's all AWS access and you can go from there. All right. So if I go inside of log stream here, you'll notice that I have logs, which is good news. That means my Lambda actually worked and it posted logs for me, which is great and fantastic. Uh, so the next thing that I wanna do in this particular scenario is I'm actually gonna go back to the log group because I could search here. So I could do some form of analysis here, uh, which I don't really recommend. I could search for like event and sometimes it'll work and sometimes it won't. Um, and it's just kind of difficult here. It doesn't really give you much information about the syntax. It doesn't really give you much information about any of this stuff here. And, and you really don't even know what you're searching uh, in, in, in entirety right here, but you can use this. Uh, I prefer not to this. I'm not super familiar with, with what it would take to, to use this, but this is kind of just less optimal in my opinion, because this solution here is called Log Insights. And if I click Log Insights, it's much more optical or optimal. It basically takes and allows you to query against the actual log group itself. Uh, and you can set your intervals that you want to query at. So if I wanted to query at 12 hours, I can set 12 hours. Uh, if I wanted to query, you know, all the way back to however long. So inside of your CloudWatch over here, you can see we can do a quick check real quick. And we can see the retention period. So we can see how long. So this particular log group since it was created you know uh manually without provisioning it really and via the uh, lambda wizard as it was generating logs uh the retention time is never to expire uh, which ideally you know you would set that to whatever your compliance is or or whatever your data policy is around how how frequently you need you know to keep logs around and whatnot and also for cost uh, 
uh, for cost savings and those sorts of things. But for now, that's fine. Uh, and you can search these logs all the way back to there uh, using this tool. So uh, basically what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna run the sample query. This sample query is basically looking at these two fields. Uh, it's taking the timestamp and it's sorting those by timestamp. So it's taking me the last 20 logs essentially. So we'll run this and we'll take a look at these right here. So yeah, so inside of here, you can see in the logs that I've basically just queried that I get the end of the request. So this is the basic uh, fields that that are kind of published as Lambda's complete. Th those are not really helpful for us in this particular scenario, but they're the fields that publish as Lambda's complete. Uh, you can see that they're published by, um, by AWS because they have the at symbol at front. Uh, fields that have the at symbol in the front are AWS fields uh, that, that are added by AWS. Uh, if you go and look, you can see right here where it actually begins. Uh, it gives us the information about the execution and those sorts of things to report on, you know, such as the duration and all this, um, which is which is beneficial if you want to do some uh, kind of, you know, statistics against that. But what we really care about and what we're going to look at today is the message body uh, today. And we're going to go through and we're going to dive into this JSON that I just kind of pumped out. Obviously, you probably wouldn't log something of this size or magnitude. But the only reason I did today is because it gives us a lot of fields. You would probably have, you know, depending on your code coverage, you would have smaller lines of, of you know, less magnitude of JSON uh, being input to logs. And you would be able to have a particular uniqueness about them in order to, you know, define your search criteria. Uh, but for this example today, we'll roll with this. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create a separate query. And if we look back at this, uh, we remember that I changed the CloudFront viewer country. So I was I was modifying that so that we'd have a couple different, um, a few different data uh, points that would be pulled in here. So we'd have you know some level of uniqueness with this, so it's not just the same, um, you know, message over and over. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna take a look on this right side of the screen. Uh, and, and this is one of the beauties of, of Log Insights is if I click right here on what says fields, it will take all the logs that I just scanned and it will go through and it'll look at all the auto identified fields. So it'll automatically discover fields that are in JSONs. So, and then it will tell you the percentage that those fields exist within the log. So 25% of the logs contain the headers X4 to four, you know, 25% contain this and this and this and this, et cetera. Um, but the one that we're looking for right now is this particular field. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this field uh, and I'm going to actually run a query against that field so that we can start looking at a little bit more data. Uh, just one moment. All right, that's what I thought. Okay, so fields that have unique characters inside of them as, as this one does, you can see right now how it has, you know, a period and a dash inside of it. You have to put back ticks around them whenever you specify them here. Uh, otherwise it, will, it won't work, uh, it won't recognize it. It's just part of the syntax. This is using an AWS uh, query syntax uh, that's, you know, specific for CloudWatch log insights. Sometimes it can be a little finicky to get to work, uh, but it's a super powerful tool and it analyzes things very fast. I've analyzed uh, petabytes of data in a matter of, you know, a couple minutes uh, sitting here and and it's, it's really, really awesome. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and let's filter for particularly where this field is present. Uh, so I'm going to pass in the the filter uh, function. Basically, the filter function is kind of like regex. Uh, it's it's asking, you know, we're going to filter down the logs and we're going to look for, hey, where where this piece of uh, of information is. But instead of looking at where it is, I'm going to look at uh, where it's present. Uh, so I'm not going to do a particular regex match. I'm just going to say, hey, if it's present, then we're good. Let's filter to those logs. Uh, It'll let me click. There we go. So in doing so, once again, we have to put the headers uh, inside of the backticks because they basically have uh, special characters which require us to do so. And then if we look 
on this side here. So now we have this run and, and I could go ahead and run this right now. Um, and this would basically filter, let me see this, filter where that is present. Well, maybe I can't run this one second. Let me make sure I didn't do some kind of. There we go. Awesome. Yeah, so I must add some kind of syntax error there. But anyway, uh, so what I'm doing here is, is I'm doing a stats count against it. Uh, I can remove this and I can run it just like so. And it should just return those. So it'll show you the header for each one of these. Um, so it'll basically pull that out into its separate field and show you the value for it so we can look at it over here on the side. But what I wanted to do before was I wanted to run a stats count uh, so that we can start understanding you know, where our data is coming from essentially, uh, run query. And this will get us to show us that we have 17. If I remove this field here, or if I remove this filter, uh, it'll also show me how many logs do not have that. So if I run this now, It'll go through and analyze all the logs and it'll say, well, there's 51 logs that do not have that. Uh, from the looks of it, I may have changed the incorrect field when I modified the uh, country a second ago. So we're gonna go back and I'm gonna make sure that I do the headers field this time and the viewer country and not something else uh, because you know we have to pay our tones to the demo gods. Uh, but yeah, let's take a look at that real quick. So if we go back in here, and we go to uh, edit saved event. We go down, country viewer header, headers, right there. Which one did I modify? So I did just the country viewer header, but not inside of the headers, the multi value headers. Okay, interesting. All right, well, that's, that's fine. So I'll just run this a couple of times so that we'll get some different uh, value in here. And then why don't we go ahead and, and change it to like Mexico too, just so we have that one as well. We'll run that one, save test, we'll run that once. Okay. So now if we go back and we look back into Log Insights, uh, we run this query again. Uh, it takes a couple of minutes to propagate, so we may not see these immediately show up. Uh, as you can see, uh, basically Lambda is, is sending the logs over to CloudWatch, is writing the logs. Uh, it's gonna take a second for uh, the log groups to kind of like ingest those and, and prepare those. And then from there, we'll, we'll be able to see them and they'll show up here. So let's run it again. All right, awesome. As you can see, some of our some of our headers already came through, um, and I'm running the count against them. We run it one more time and see if we get our last one. Uh, fingers crossed. Maybe it'll show up. Do, do, do. Let's see, somebody play the Jeopardy theme song for me right now. <laughs> I guess. Yep, exactly. That's a, that's a bro. That's a champion. <laughs> appreciate it. Appreciate it. So, yeah. I couldn't think of the tune to save my life. <laughs> I just knew I was going to be off tune, so I didn't even try. So, let me check and make sure that I ran it with that other one. Uh, I think I ran it with the, the other test. But we'll validate that I didn't do the same problem that I did last time. Yeah, it looks like I ran it. Uh, headers, yep, with the correct one. Uh, yep, that looks fine. So let's run it again. It may just take a second. And there we go. So it showed up. All right. So the beauty of this is, is basically we've created this um, query that gives us information about 
our logs. Okay, obviously it wouldn't be something uh, like this. This is only an example, but you could also see the, the use case for where you would do such thing as log metrics against your error rates. So let's say you have an error that shows up in your logs. Uh, it's for whatever reason it's not getting published. Uh, you could, you know, then create an account to to monitor that. You could also create an account to monitor your success. So let's say you have something that says succeeded in your in your logs. Well, then you can monitor against your uh, success and, and be able to pull those into metrics and get metrics on that to generate reports as well as generate dashboards, uh, which is what we're going to look at real quick. So I have a uh, I can set up a couple different ones. I can do a bar graph here. And this is basically the bar graph showing me that I have one from Mexico, one from here, and, and, and 17 from the US. But if we look, I can do a pie chart. I have these options here, basically. Um, and inside of this, I could you know, kind of modify this, uh, this graph right here whenever I go to add to dashboard. Uh, I end up basically where I can select and put this on a dashboard already, just straight from this console. So if I come up with a query that I wanna use and that I think provides valuable insights to my teams, uh, then what I can do is I can take that and I can add it to their dashboard so that they're able to view that uh, directly inside of their service dashboard or, or whatever. But in this case, I'm gonna create a new dashboard and I'm gonna name this dashboard uh, logs dash insights dash example and I'm going to click create there we go and I'm also going to just add to dashboard all right so now if we go and look at dashboards you can see that I've basically added this dashboard uh, if I change this let's say I want it to be more restrictive and I want to do an absolute time uh, or a more recent time, let's say the last three minutes, uh, my data changes accordingly with whatever I filter by. So if I go last five minutes, you'll see here that it's primarily only these two, the US is gone because it filters accordingly uh, with the query results that it, that it gathers. Uh, this query actually runs uh, in the background of your dashboard every single time you load the dashboard and every single time you make changes to the actual, uh, the actual time interval here. So if I change this time interval, this query runs, it pulls the data again, and it updates itself accordingly. Uh, which brings me to my next point, which is, which is you know, pretty important, is that you can really slow down the load time on your dashboards if you put overly complex queries into your dashboards. Uh, it's, it's just the same thing as you do your applications. Uh, if you add overly complex queries into your applications, you can slow down your application performance. Uh, that's the same thing with this. You want to be very deliberate with your logging structure and with and with your logs as you put those things out. I highly recommend, you know, doing code coverage reports to, to ensure that you're getting, you know, coverage across all of your all of your applications and services in order for you to ensure that, you know, there is some kind of quality going out and that it is, you know, specific to these applications and making sure that it, it is able to be, you know, acted upon rather than just, hey, this failed. Uh, because if you just go through failures of everything and it doesn't have any kind of identifier or anything like that, it becomes really, really difficult very quickly uh, to identify what's going on. But, you know, sometimes that's what's actually going on is, is that you need to improve your logging uh, first before we can move on to the to improving the, the services and systems. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at a, another one. So we have basically went here, we've created this. I'll just go back uh, to Log Insights. Uh, I'll go to Monitor, I'll go to View and CloudWatch, just easy way so I don't have to sit here and press back. Uh, I'll keep the dashboard open. Well, there we go. All right. So yeah, so um, at this point, we have we have basically done this where we can check and we can look for you know stats and generate stats uh, this way. But we can also do such things as you know regex, like I was talking about, and and just kind of drill down. It's it's one of the simplest and easiest troubleshooting tools. Ninety percent of the time, when something breaks or or we experience problems, what happens essentially is you know the the devs come to us and they're like, hey, I, I'm trying to troubleshoot this. Can you? Can you help me try to figure this out? And this is one of the simplest things that I always come and do. And it just makes things 
you know, fast and simple. Uh, but I'll go straight inside of here and I'll basically take something along the lines of the message uh, in itself, such as, um, you know, this, and I will do filter at message. So I'm filtering the message and I'm, I'm gonna look inside of it. I'm gonna do a like, and I'm gonna specify uh, error. Uh, and then sort, well, sort at timestamp descending. And then we're gonna limit it to 20. Uh, this can actually go all the way up. If I recall correctly, I think to 10,000 or 20,000, let me see. 20,000, I think that's the limit. Maybe it's 10,000. Yeah, 10,000. So you can you can go through and you can actually generate uh, a report with 10,000 uh, items in it, um, which is you know pretty cool. But as you can see, since we're using this, this sample data set, uh, there's not the word error inside of here. However, just for the sake of this example, I'll go back to here. Uh, I'll go to edit this and I'm just going to input, let me see if we have some kind of status code or something that I can look for. Yeah, there we go. Let's see. What do we have? Uh, we'll just do it as, we'll look for bar since bar is in here. We'll just search for bar. Okay. So we'll basically just search for bar here. Uh, and what this right here will do is if we go back to logs instead of visualization. We can see all the messages that contain bar inside of it, basically, um, which, which can be helpful and useful um, where we're basically just troubleshooting and trying to identify, you know, any indicators that, could potentially uh, point us in the right direction. Um, the beauty of a lot of this too is, is as you start to identify these queries that you wanna build, uh, such as the previous query, like the count that we generated, you know, it took me a second to get this running and it works now and we've, and we've got it working. But the first thing that we want to do to really start helping our team and, and make, you know, run books and build out and bake run books around this so that, you know, no matter who who's on call or anything like that, they can jump on and start troubleshooting systems is that we want to save these. Uh, we can save them and you'll see the queries over here. Uh, you have some more sample queries inside of here that we that you could run through and try or we could try together. Uh, but they're just good examples um, around commonly, you know, commonly used queries and those sorts of things. Uh, and, and they pertain to particular services too, based on how those services return their logs. For example, if I wanted to do the Lambda one here, um, you know, I could run this one, but let me save this one first to show you how to save this. Uh, basically what we're doing here is we're doing a cloud front dash viewer dash country count. Uh, and I'm gonna create a new folder. I normally name these folders uh, like so, where I have the service that I'm actually scanning, and then I take the name of the the unique name or unique identifier of the service and put that in there. Uh, whenever I create the folder itself, uh, just to kind of give me a, a nice pattern that scales well across all the different services in AWS. Um, and then, yeah, I will go ahead and save this. Uh, and then if you look over here, you'll see that I have the Lambda, I have the login sites example, and then I have this query. So anyone in your account can access these uh, that are operating within the same region. These are region uh, specific. So if you are, you know, basically have a distributed team and your team's working together and they're, you know, they're looking for how to troubleshoot a system, you can basically take and say for the login sites, Lambda, you know, these are a couple of queries that we found helpful. You know, these could potentially help you identify issues and, and those sorts of uh, things there, which is pretty powerful. But if we look, for example, I'll show you some of the more statistical um, 
possibilities here. So we can take and we can run the uh, the filter type and we're gonna take basically the, the stats and we're gonna average them and, and run them over a duration. So what we're looking at here is we're getting the average duration is, is approximately, you know, 3.2 uh, and then we're getting this kind of information too, which this information as well can be put onto the, uh, can be added to the dashboard um, and, you know, provide you some level of insights about how the Lambda is actually performing at a, at a quick glance. Uh, and you can also track the improvements that are being made. So if we wanted to, you know, as, essentially improve upon uh, what, what exists right here, uh, we could do this based on and then start breaking it down where we'd have each one of these as a, basically a data point and each data point here we could then put into a widget and that widget could be added to the dashboard where we could track trends uh, from there you can also set and uh, export this stuff as as metrics and, and all that and start building alarms and those sorts of things around it as well uh, so it really gets there's really some powerful stuff um, yeah, and I, I think that's pretty much it. This has shown a bunch of it. I uh, hope you all have enjoyed this. Uh, it was just kind of something that I do on a daily basis. Uh, I wish I would have known about it, you know, four years ago, whenever I first started. Uh, I learned it about, you know, a year in and it, it really helped me. And and it was one of the the big turning points for uh, what I do uh, now is, is that, you know, I, I've always said if I can find the logs and I can have a way to search the logs that I can solve the problem. Uh, and that's kind of what Log Insights has provided for me. That's awesome. We got any questions from the group? I have one. Uh, so you've focused on the retrieval of logs that have been written mostly in this case and more cloud native pieces. Do, do you have any advice on um, a solution that would allow us to do something like uh, typically you might use Elasticsearch for with a log collector. So we have an, uh, just a, a web app or something, an Apache logs that we want to gather and throw into CloudWatch logs for to use these insights. Is there, do you have any uh, suggestions for that? Yeah, so one of the, the standard things that I see quite frequently is that you you most most of the time whenever you're using like EC2 machines or something like that, um, you can basically install the CloudWatch agent, uh, which will enable you to deliver logs uh, to CloudWatch uh, log groups. Uh, there's also the possibility where you can do such things as like Kinesis streams. Uh, there's there's particular situations where, let's say I'm not using uh, CloudWatch as my centralized logging. Uh, there's you know sometimes I use CloudWatch for its its just simple and, and simplicity approach here. But you know if I wanted to move a bulk amount of logs from one service to another, such as like Datadog or something along those lines, uh, then I would use something like a Kinesis stream or something like that and shoot it over uh, the specifies and, and send those through there. Uh, and I've done that in, in several occasions, uh, just depending on whatever the solution was that, you know, they were looking for. Does that help you, Corey? Uh, yes, yeah. Actually, I don't know that I hadn't seen CloudWatch agent before. If I did, I'd forgotten about it. So yes, thank you for that suggestion. Awesome. Come on, Sergey, you got to have a question. <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty interesting stuff. There is a, um, so th this this obviously just starts to empower you. Uh, it, and it gets my mind going, right? When I, when I look at certain sets of logs and I start seeing what data we have available to us, it really enriches our observability uh, where I can say, hey, you know, maybe that's a good data point. Like what, you know, we log in, inside of our, inside of our CICD pipelines and, and these things, we, we log what I consider door metrics, which are metrics that tell me like, well, let's say I have a Terraform pipeline and that Terraform pipeline tells me 50 resources changed. Well, maybe I want to capture that those 50 resources change into a, into a dashboard so that I can see, hey, this pipeline was ran, it logged that it changed 50 things. Well, I have basically a Dora metric dashboard where I can observe that, hey, 50 things changed uh, with this pipeline here. It made 50 changes. And I can look back on that and be able to keep track of like, well, were any changes introduced to the system? And were they introduced via the pipelines and these sorts of things? But yeah, it's uh, it's cool. It's it's 
pretty interesting stuff. It's just something that I think everyone should have in their toolbox. Um, I like it better than Datadog. I, I will say that I I've get frustrated sometimes when I have to do log analysis in Datadog because the simplicity of, of this tool just makes it where I'm just like, Hey, d don't take my logs out of log insights. Like, like don't, don't steal my logs out of CloudWatch and, and put them somewhere else because I enjoy uh, doing it this way at this point. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, that's uh, Sergey so Morgan speaking. So uh, I've been using like CloudWatch for like a long time and uh, you know, it's very beneficial and it's like, just try to do some kind of like third party tools and they kind of, you know, they still like on AWS and you know, like ever, keeping everything like in AWS, keeping everything like native is like the best, the best possible way and you know. Yeah, that's what I feel, feel like most of the time. Um, I think there's particular features uh, that I do enjoy about about some other tools uh, sometimes, but for the most part, this is at, at the bare bones and simplicity of it is what makes it right. Sometimes I always say that it, it's more about, you know, less about the features and the things that that exist within tools and more about how you feel when you're actually working with the tool itself. Uh, if if I was having to struggle uh, to try to find anything, but I had a rich experience, then it, it wouldn't be that rich experience to me. It would be more along the lines of, hey, I, I really, really had to struggle to find this. This is a little bit more ad hoc, -y, a little bit more, you know, it requires you to build processes and, and build these procedures to empower your teams. And you have to kind of follow like, hey, we're this, we're going to have to build these queries, but as long as why you can create those queries and you can go through that process of, of solving your own problems, then you can generate a whole lot of value for your teams. Yeah. Without having to rely on some machine learning algorithm thing that, that may get lucky and give you an answer once every, you know, X amount of days or something like that. But most of the time they, a lot of them don't. Yeah. I want to add uh, your answer about the uh, CloudWatch agent. You know, uh, the CloudWatch engine is, uh, yes, it's kind of like a, like a keystone of the whole like solution. And uh, it's better mm -hmm. to have it like incorporated in your own uh, like base image that you use to build your, you know, uh, AWS uh, instances from. And uh, so, yes, it is there, but again, this, uh, this uh, agent requires some kind of configuration, like JSON configuration. So, which log, which filters, you know, how and everything and where to send them. So uh, this could be uh, like, you know, kind of a natural part of like CloudFormation template. So when you describe your, you know, like Elder Scaling Group, for example, you describe your, you know, the uh, like instance type. And of course you have like a uh, config file for the um, Cloud uh, Watch log, uh, log agent and also, um, you know, because you know what the, what will be the group name you're sending the logs into, then you can add some kind of like metric filter based on those logs, for example. And uh, then uh, metric filter is kind of like just the numbers, but you know, we all humans, we love like visual information. So we can convert that kind of uh, numbers into the like graphs. And then uh, your, uh, you know, cloud formation uh, template will also install not only your, you know, all the scaling group, but also, uh, you know, all the cloud voice, you know, hide, you know, hidden magic, hidden magic, and then uh, dashboard related to your other scaling group. And you can see like all the data, like, you know, source yeah. level, over level, business level, you know, exactly. Graphs. So, and it's all just like a button click. So, booms and you have it all so just yep. a little struggle with the templates yep exactly that's the thing and, and it's this it's similar to to cloud front uh to to uh, cloud formation templates as, as i create terraform modules right i build terraform modules and my terraform modules basically provision a lot of that stuff uh you know it, it sets by default, certain things have logging. By default, these log groups have X amount of retention time based on whatever our, our compliance policy is for those customers and those things. Uh, it, it just provisions all that out of the box, as well as similar to what you're saying, whenever I'm doing microservices and things at scale like that, and, and you were talking about the filter, it, it reminded me of, of one of the filters that I essentially have uh, for my... Uh, 
for my services uh, that I'm that I'm running on on microservices. But basically, what we have is we have X-ray running. And if y'all aren't familiar with X-ray, X-ray is is basically uh, Amazon service for tracing. And as we set up and we send these uh, traces through the whole entire uh, ingest process and and all these uh, different log locations, they go through API Gateway, they go through Lambda, they go through all these different locations, right? I always like to take and I like to filter out the, the past like 15 of the traces and those traces I can add directly to the dashboard too in a list. It doesn't have to be a graph. It can just be a straight list uh, that can be added to the dashboard as well so that it gives me, okay, these were the last five traces that went through API Gateway. And then I can match those up with the Lambda and all these other things too, as I feel necessary. But it, it kind of gives you just a, a quick view there so that you can keep track of things. Uh, and also, you know, have just essential data. But yeah, the, the, the modules are, are very, very important as you set standards. Uh, Sergey, you're absolutely right. Like just having things modularized and, and standardized of, of, hey, we you know use this base image, use this uh, standardized logging so that we can get this stuff into CloudWatch and, and off of the servers, uh, use this you know retention time so that we're keeping our data and we're being cost effective while doing it and, and not, you know, provisioning tons of logs. Uh, we even go to the point of where we uh, where we actually set the logging levels on some services just by default. Uh, certain log logging levels on services that once we configure them, they're set, so people can't go and change them and and skyrocket the bill. Uh, I've got I've got one thing that I work on right now that you know it generates about two million uh, API requests per minute. Uh, and it's pretty ridiculous if you imagine what the the log bill would be if if I went and I just turned it on like you know debug and just let it let it let it spew everything it had. Uh, I would probably rack up a major API bill and it wouldn't be good. Yeah, yeah. Price price is like the most significant part of that. So, yeah. but you know, it worth it and it's kind of very flexible and it's very you know. Um, Additive with other like third party solutions because third party solutions pay for the same amount of money to AWS anyway. Like they host it there and then they have some, you know, more money for their role. So, exactly. They're Almost like every logger development process, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and it, and it's not like you're getting any more reliability out of their tool because they are hosted on AWS. If AWS goes down, they go down, right? Like oftentimes, that's what I've seen. I think it was a pretty interesting thing, a couple a couple uh, months ago that that new relic actually went down, and uh, one of the, one of the people that I work for uh, and, and work with, they their their new relic went down, and the beauty was that well we have we have these logs that are also being archived, right? So they're, they're staying here and they're staying here for a, a retention period inside of inside of both locations. But this one is just kind of for parsing and doing their, their other stuff. But inside of CloudWatch, it was available to us. So New Relic went down because there was like a select group of things in that region that failed. However, CloudWatch was still up. So it was, it was kind of funny seeing that they had an AWS outage, but the AWS service alternative that they were basically providing wasn't affected. Yeah. Yeah, and also uh, this uh, CloudWatch is uh, not only helpful for, you know, like visualizing the information, not only helpful for like, you know, providing the secure way to access, you know, the whole logs for, for example, like tech support that shouldn't, Get access, get get access inside of the cloud, but just like they they have access to the logs themselves. But uh, the most important part that it can help you to develop some automation for your, uh, for example, auto scaling group itself. So some kind of some it, it can generate some metrics that help to control you know your uh, you know your workload using uh, Lambda functions, for example, you can have like Lambda functions or you can have whatever. So this is like, you know, it's kind of like one of the vital parts, you know, like it's like you have virtual machine that you have like disk storage, you have like, you know, S3 and CloudWatch is kind of, it's kind of brain because mm -hmm. with all that, it's kind of like, it's very like very simple and just, you know, you said like run tree, it will run tree instances, but without, CloudWatch adds uh, like brain into the whole thing. 
It does. It does. So one of the earliest SQ or one of the earliest AWS services, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, was SQS. And SQS and the event processing system is basically at everything that's running behind the scenes here, right? Like every time I send these logs, it's probably going to an SQS queue somewhere and getting processed up. And it's probably getting processed up essentially to, you know, to CloudWatch and these sorts of things. Um, but other than that, man, it's it's just like, it, it, the beauty of things being event-driven is, is yeah. crucial here. And just taking these, event-driven logs and and building these things to identify and analyze them uh and then from there it's just kind of all processing out 